Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Our expert from Google is going to share the best mobile strategies. I'm Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by Dealeron. And for anyone who isn't familiar with Dealeron, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our search engine optimization, best-in-class customer service, and our award-winning websites. Dealeron was named the top-rated website provider by Driving Sales in 2011, and Dealeron customers were winners of the Spring 2012 Digital Dealer Website Excellence Awards. Dealeron is so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that we're the only company in the industry to offer a lead guarantee program. That's right, a lead guarantee program. So if your website company isn't guaranteeing you a number of leads, then maybe you should check us out at dealeron.com. And we have such a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have Eli Romberg as our presenter today. Eli Romberg is a strategic partner manager on the automotive channel sales team for North America at a little company called Google. Romberg has over five years experience in online advertising and possesses an innate passion for internet technologies and digital solutions. He's responsible for providing automotive partners with scalable solutions to further develop dealer advertising strategies. And he shares in-depth market analysis and has helped both partners and dealers maximize their investment with Google AdWords. And we're very, very pleased to have him here with us today. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, don't worry, we're going to respond by email later today. Also, don't forget, a link to download a copy of the webinar recording is also going to be emailed to you later today for your reference, and please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And guess what? So excited. Our good friends at Google are offering up some prizes today for you, our dear attendees. So all you have to do is go to the Dealer On Google Plus page and answer a simple question. That's all you have to do. So write down this address and get to it. The address on the screen is up there. Now, the question that you have to answer is, what's your creative solution to get in front of shoppers at the zero moment of, what am I saying? <laughs> What's your creative solution for mobile strategies? That's what I meant to say. So give us a decent answer and you'll be winning some Google swag today. Also, at the conclusion of today's webinar, you'll receive a short survey. So please fill it out as we are always looking for quality feedback from our audience. And today, we're going to randomly select some winners from all the completed surveys to also get some Google swag. So go to it now. It's gplus.to slash dealer on. Now let's get started. Let's learn about the best mobile strategies. Eli, how are you today? I'm doing well. And how are you doing, Eliana? I'm doing great. I'm very excited. I'm going to channel my inner uh, gift giver, maybe uh, Pat Sajak, right? <laughs> Alex Trebek, maybe? I don't know, I don't know. So I'm very excited about the Google swag and very excited that you're here to talk to us about mobile strategies. Because over the past weeks, this particular subject has come up several times in my past webinars. So now we have you. I can't, I can't think of a better source to give us uh, a webinar on best mobile strategies than than Eli Romberg from Google. So I'm very excited to have you here. What are we going to be learning today? Well, I'm equally excited. And thank you very much for the kind intro and for having me back on uh, your webinar series. Very, very excited to be talking to all of you today. Um, what I thought it would be great is to tee off today's webinar with a quote from Eric Schmidt, executive chairman and former uh, CEO of Google, who uh, stated in a recent earnings call that if you don't have a mobile strategy, you don't have a strategy at all. So today, and to help provide a little bit more context to this bold statement, um, I wanted to review some of the more recent trends we're witnessing within the mobile landscape, as well as talk to you about how auto shoppers are leveraging mobile during their shopping process and discuss why it's so critical for businesses, specifically auto dealers, to implement a mobile strategy. Um, and then I'll review some of the various mobile advertising products offered by Google and share a few key strategies that you should all be considering as you plan out your own mobile strategy. So that's what I'll be covering today. Sounds good? That sounds great to me. Let's get going. Excellent. Let's get going. So it's no breaking news that mobile is big. 
we've been hearing this for quite some time now, but how exactly, um, how big exactly is big? Well, let's take a look at some numbers. Within the 25 years since the mobile phone has been introduced, the number of mobile devices has reached 5 billion. And this is so remarkable because we live in a global population of just under 7 billion. Now, if we put these numbers in some context against other mediums, we can see that over the past decade, the number of mobile phones has actually surpassed the total number of landline phones, TV sets, credit cards, and even FM radios. Pretty amazing. Now, alongside this tremendous growth in the number of mobile phones, over the past decade, we've also witnessed a transformation in the way people use their phones. So, in fact, just in the U.S. alone, about 91 million people use their phones to not only make phone calls, but actually to access the web. And this mobile web adoption is growing faster than the desktop web adoption in the mid-90s. Again, just to put things in perspective, um, from a media spend standpoint, in 2009, the ad spend on mobile was about $1.4 billion, but it is actually projected to hit nearly $11 billion in 2016. Oh, my gosh. All this data, yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy. And all this data is really leading analysts to think that the mobile has hit a tipping point. And what I mean by that is that the rate of mobile phone adoption is so great that the number of users who rely on their mobile phones to access the internet is predicted to exceed the number of users who use their desktop to access the internet by the year 2013. So more people are going to be using their mobile devices to access the internet than people using their actual computers. And as remarkable as that may sound, some analysts are actually predicting that we'll hit this tipping point even sooner than 2013, as in sometime this year. And the Google search query are, providing, uh, are proving this. And here, as you can see in the blue line, that represents the mobile search, which spikes during each new smartphone launch, while the yellow line shows the desktop search queries over the same time period. You can see how, from a growth standpoint, mobile searches compared to uh, desktop searches. And if you um, are managing just search campaigns but aren't tapping into mobile, you're missing out on great opportunities. Another interesting trend to consider when thinking about mobile versus desktop is the fluctuation in usage throughout the day. If we take, for example, desktop usage, we can see that um, there are noticeable drops in usage during lunch and after work hours. Conversely, mobile connectivity is more constant throughout the day. Another key takeaway from the graph is that mobile complements desktop. That is, whenever there is a drop in desktop usage, mobile usage seems to increase. And if we think about our daily routines, this makes perfect sense. I mean, we wake up in the morning, and along with our morning coffee, we might fire up our laptops to check our emails, the weather forecast for that day, or even last night's sports scores. But when we hit the road to go to work, we rely on our mobile devices to stay connected. Same thing at lunchtime. As we step away from our offices and our desktop computers at our desks, we immediately pull out our smartphones to check our news feeds and make sure we don't miss out on any emails. And the same goes for when we go back home in the evening. Again, we look at our desktops to check our emails before we go to sleep, but then at later in the evening, as we retire to bed, we usually tend to pick up our mobile phones um, and tablet devices to continue surfing the internet. Now, if we zoom out just a bit and compare desktop usage against mobile usage on a weekly level, we can see that there is a clear drop-off of desktop usage during the weekend as people, again, are away from their offices and away from their computers. However, mobile actually sees the highest usage on these same very days. And the reason why I wanted to highlight these two trends is because it's important to realize that mobile is not just another media outlet that can drive incremental visits to your storefront, but rather if you don't have a mobile strategy in place, you're actually at risk of losing customers to the competition as shoppers are relying on their mobile devices to help with their research. From a dealership perspective, we know that the weekend are some of the busiest days for car shoppers to come in and visit the showrooms. However, the above graph suggests that um, you will likely, those people will actually be looking for your dealership via a mobile device on the weekend. And if you're not there to be found, because all your focus is on desktop search campaigns, you risk losing that potential customer to dealerships that do have mobile um, strategies in place. So I hope that by now I managed to convey how mobile plays a substantial role. And you might still be asking yourself, how does this actually translate uh, as an opportunity for auto dealers? 
And so with the last two slides, we touched on this a little bit, um, but I did want to expand on this quite a bit more. So let's take a look at a few key metrics that will help illustrate the mobile opportunity when it comes to auto dealerships. According to the 2011 Automotive Biflow Study completed by Google Compete and Polk Research, 25% of auto shoppers use their mobile device during the beginning, middle, and end of the auto shopping process. But how are these 25% of auto shoppers using the mobile devices throughout the shopping process? Well, primarily car shoppers are using search engines on their mobile phones, but they're also researching vehicles on manufacturer websites, third-party sites, review sites, and a number of other sites, making it that much more crucial for dealers to master their online presence on mobile. And to further illustrate this point, a little earlier I showed a graph that demonstrated the rapid pace at which mobile queries are growing. What we're looking at here on this slide is query data specific to auto searches. Consistent with what we saw before, here too we see that the number of mobile queries have increased exponentially over the course of the past three years. And today we're actually seeing about 38% of all vehicle shopping queries come from mobile devices. But you're still probably asking yourself, what are the auto shoppers actually searching for and researching when they're using their mobile devices? So the answer to that is that they're searching for many different things, including dealership location and contact info. They're reading reviews and looking for promotions. However, comparing features and prices were found to be the top research activities performed by auto intenders on their mobile devices. But how does all this research translate into action? Well, after looking up local information on their smartphones, 77% of people contacted a business through a visit to the showroom or a phone call. And 90% of those individuals take action that same very day, clearly illustrating how mobile is a critical tool for driving customers to your dealership. So, most of you by now, I hope, recognize the value of mobile and are super excited to jump right into learning what mobile solutions we have to offer. However, you might still be concerned that the mobile opportunity might not be applicable to all auto dealers. And while I've shared all this great data about how auto shoppers are using mobile devices that uh, ultimately lead them to local dealerships, this might not be the case for your dealership. The question being, does mobile opportunity only speak to certain types of cars or popular makes? So the answer is, Definite no. If you look at the segmentation of auto shoppers who use their mobile devices as a research tool, we can clearly see that they're all a very well diversified group when it comes to vehicle types that they're considering. So whether um, it's luxury car shoppers, truck shoppers, sedan shoppers, or even convertible shoppers, they all use their mobile phones during the research process. More so, this is also true for the brand they're considering. As you see here, there's a pretty even distribution, again, between the mobile users and the OEM and makes they're considering. Now, what these segmentations provide us with is, is the understanding that the mobile opportunity is not limited to a specific auto type or main, but rather all dealerships, whether they're selling luxury cars or trucks, or Range Rovers or Honda Civics, all dealerships can benefit from implementing a mobile strategy. So now that we're all up to speed on the widespread adoption of mobile devices and have a better understanding as to how auto shoppers use their mobile devices, I'd like to now review the Google mobile offering and demonstrate how you can leverage them to capture prospective customers. So Google offers three types of mobile advertising formats that you've probably all seen before on your smartphones already. We have search ads, display ads, and ads and phone apps. On mobile, the search ads mirror their desktop counterparts, um, except that the ad, takes up a lot, the ad takes up a whole lot more real estate. And what I mean by that is that, one, the mobile device screen is a lot smaller when you compare it to the desktop or laptop screens, resulting in the ad unit taking up a whole lot more space on the search engine result page. And this presents a great opportunity to grab a user's attention when they're conducting a search on their mobile devices. And second, Due to the limited size of the screen, only five ad units are eligible to serve on a mobile search results page versus the 11 that can be served on the desktop SERP. With display, this means serving targeted ads to users who are surfing relevant sites. For example, an in-market shopper might be using his mobile device to read car reviews or even just be reading the news. 
With the display ads, you can target these users and serve engaging ads that can help spark interest in your dealership or your offers. And lastly, Google offers the ability to serve display ads directly within mobile phone apps. So let's take a closer look at each one of these ad formats. The most popular and familiar <clears throat> of these three is search. Search ads on mobile devices look and behave in a very similar fashion to the search ads that you're used to running on desktop and laptop computers. When you advertise your Google search ad on mobile, you can direct users to your website, or preferably your mobile optimized or mobile friendly website, and I'll expand on that uh, quite a bit in just a little bit. But what really makes the mobile ad format powerful are the ad extensions that you can apply to your mobile ads. And I'll elaborate on this also uh, quite a bit in just a minute. But in short, with these extensions to your mobile campaign, you can enable users to call your dealership or even provide their, uh, driving directions to your showroom directly from within your ad, basically enhancing your ad and making it not only stand out against some of the competition, but also provide more value to the user. Google also boasts a great mobile display product that includes a variety of innovative ad formats that are served across Google's extensive display network. These displayed ad formats include text ads, uh, click-to-call ads, click-to-download app ads, uh, as well as expandable image and video ads. As previously mentioned, they can be used to target users surfing relevant content across the web. And of course, how can we talk about smartphones without talking about apps? <laughs> Today, a growing number of consumers are spending more and more of their time in phone applications. This creates a whole new opportunity to reach engaged consumers and deliver relevant and targeted ads. Via AdMob, Google now has the ability to serve ads across hundreds of thousands of apps and reach potential customers worldwide. In fact, Google now reaches more properties than any other mobile advertising network out there. So now that we've covered the mobile products made available by Google, let's review in more detail how auto dealerships can leverage them in creating effective mobile strategy. But maybe before we do that, Eliana, perhaps we can do a quick poll to see um, of the audience who already has implemented a mobile strategy a part of their greater marketing efforts. I think that's a great yeah, idea. Awesome. That's a great idea, Eli. Let's do that. So if everyone out there in webinar land could please look at your screen and the question and answers are already posted on there. So the question before you is, are you currently employing a mobile strategy? Please select one of the following answers, yup, sure am, or I've been thinking about it, or nope, that's why I'm here. And when we have a majority of the votes in, we'll close the poll and share the results. And I know everyone who saw the last slide with the apps their eye went right to the Angry Birds app. I know they all did. You don't even have to say anything. <laughs> so, Eli, what do you yes. think the answer the, the majority is going to be? I'm just going to... I'm hoping the answer is going to be a high percentage of dealerships already implementing a mobile strategy. Well, but, I'll tell uh, you what. Let, well, we're going to find out in two seconds because you know what? We have almost everyone voting now. So we're going to close the poll and share the results. And Eli, pretty good guess in there. 42% of our attendees today said, yup, sure am. 28% said, I've been thinking about it. And 31% said, nope, that's why I'm here. Okay, fantastic. So I hope uh, then this webinar will be of value to the 58% that aren't doing it just yet. And hopefully I could also add a couple tips and best practices for the 42% that already do have a mobile strategy in place. I bet you will. So where are we going from here now? Excellent. So when it comes to implementing a mobile strategy, from my perspective, there really are two key elements that need to be considered. One is your AdWords campaigns, and two is your website. And not to worry, I'm going to address both of these in quite some detail. Uh, whoops. Okay. So when thinking about a strategy, we need to consider first what part of the purchase funnel we want to focus on. Do we want to address the upper funnel and focus our efforts on driving brand awareness, uh, creating brand affinity, or promoting vehicle launches? Or do we want to focus on the lower funnel and implement a strategy that can help drive purchase intent? 
So given today's audience, I figured it would be most fitting to focus our discussion around the latter, uh, more specifically address tactics that can benefit you guys in driving purchase intent to auto shoppers into your lots. But before we do that, let's just quickly take a look at this interesting survey that uncovered that the auto shoppers use their mobile devices primarily during the middle and end of their auto research process. And this data amplifies the importance for auto dealers to implement a mobile strategy to ensure that they get in front of the auto shoppers uh, while they approach the end of the funnel and are close to making a purchase decision. So to this end, let's now review how auto dealers can get in front of the potential customers and help influence their decision at the moment of truth. The first mobile strategy that I wanted to share is around the utilization of mobile ad extensions. Sorry, folks. <laughs> little update there from my computer. So as previously mentioned, Google offers multiple ad extensions to its traditional ads that help enhance the ad and improve its performance. In the next few slides, I'll review practical implementation of these ad extensions and demonstrate how they can be an effective tool for driving sales uh, into, uh, for auto dealers. So starting off with call extensions, call extensions enable advertisers to display a clickable phone number in their ads, giving customers the option to make contact by clicking on the business's phone number or alternatively by visiting the business's website. At Google, we have seen great success with call extensions. In fact, campaigns set up with call extensions have seen an, on average a 7% increase in click-through rates compared to campaigns without call extensions. More importantly, this has been driving incremental leads um, to the dealerships, or to the businesses, sorry, without cannibalizing the clicks to the business's website. Now, a great way for auto dealers to um, use this feature would be to set up and enable call extensions and allow users to quickly reach the dealership. As you can see in this example, um, the dealership's ad includes a phone number that when clicked on automatically triggers the phone's dialer, giving the user the option to call the business in an intuitive and seamless fashion. A great use case for this functionality would be as follows. Uh, maybe an in-market auto shopper is interested in uh, testing out one of the new Priuses. He could go on his mobile phone, does a quick search on his uh, device for a local Toyota dealership. Then amongst all the results, there is one ad that stands out and then is utilizing the call extensions. He simply has to tap on the number and is quickly passed through to the dealership to schedule a test drive. Not only does this give the user the ability to more easily connect with the dealer, but as we've seen, ad utilizing these call extensions benefit from an increased performance as well. Eli, real fast, yeah. I know you're totally in the groove, but uh, Marla wrote in and she said a couple slides ago, the stat mm -hmm. said something about increase 7% to CTR, and she just wanted yep. some clarification what CTR meant. Yes, so CTR is click-through rate. So basically out of all the times that your ads are uh, being served and against you know, relevant queries, how many times do people actually click on those ads? So it's a percentage of clicked on ads versus the time the ads were actually served. Gotcha, and so the increase of 7% meant that they had a 7% higher click-through rate? That is correct. Okay, great. Marla, if you have any follow-up questions, let us know. And Eli, thank you so much for letting me interrupt you. <laughs> Please and, continue. And, no. <laughs> and just to elaborate on that, the, the reason why we're seeing this increase uh, in click-through rates is because your ad stands out against the competition. You have this extra feature and functionality that maybe the other ads don't have. So it automatically draws the attention of the user to your ad. Additionally, it also makes your ad you know, it enhances it with additional functionality so the user might find your ad more um, user friendly and want to click on that phone number because they want to dial the business right away without having to visit the website and then find the number and then click on it. So for a combination of reasons, these ads are just more attractive to the users and hence we're seeing this um, increase in performance. Isn't there some stat out there that says that most people who go and use their mobile to, to look for these other businesses or look for, for those kind of ads or specials, that they really are looking for the phone number, most of them? I don't have that stat on the top of my head, but it definitely resonates and makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> okay. All right. You go, go, go do. Do, Eli. Do what you're doing. Thank you, <laughs> so, thank you Eliana. 
So another great example of how dealerships can leverage call extensions in their mobile ads is for promoting parts and services. So in this example, say a mobile user is searching for discount tires on his phone. Having call extension as part of the dealership's ad will allow the users to quickly call the dealership, inquire whether they have the tires he is looking for uh, in stock, get directions to the dealership, find out about specials and promotions, and when the dealership might be open, and so forth. So a great another example of how you folks can leverage this type of extension as part of your mobile strategy. The next ad extension uh, that we'll review is location extensions. Similar to the desktop version, an advertiser can enter their business's address, and, when, and then when their ad is served, it may include the address underneath the ad. Additionally, the user can then expand this address with that little plus symbol that you see in the logo there, in the ad unit, um, and then be able to view a map of the area and even get driving directions directly from within the ad unit. But on the mobile device, this functionality is extended even further. Leveraging the phone's built-in GPS technology, you can now determine the distance of the user to nearby businesses. What this translates into, when a business is searched for by a user within a 30-mile radius of its location, you will add a distance marker that indicates that distance between the business and the user. So again, in the context of auto, ads using location extensions display the distance between the user and the nearest dealership. They're capable of providing down-to-the-block level detail that can really drive more customers into your dealership. And this is really just the beginning of how mobile will make it easier for you and your customers to find your, your location at the moment of truth. So they're out and about, they're trying to head out to the dealership to test drive a new car, to visit the showroom, to check out the different models. They do a quick search, they see your ad, they see how far they are from your dealership, and they right away have the ability to click, get the address, get the directions, and land in your showroom. Yeah, a lot of people use their smartphones on the fly just to get the directions, and they use it, you know, as a GPS. So that's fantastic. Absolutely. And if we go back to one of the earlier slides where we saw, you know, the pattern of mobile users on weekends, the majority of users are leveraging, <coughs> excuse me, um, the, the mobile device on the weekend when they're headed to the dealership. So that's, you know, it's so crucial to have these extensions enabled uh, on mobile devices to really be able to target those audiences when it actually matters. Agreed, agreed. So now implementing location extensions can prove critical to auto dealers. And we touched on this a little bit just a minute ago. So imagine, for example, an auto shopper who is interested in visiting a local dealership to explore purchasing a new vehicle. So he uses his mobile phone to search for the nearest dealership to his current location. And the search, as we can see in this example, returns two results. One of them has this hyperlocal ad. Um, the hyperlocal ad, which uses location extensions, uh, provides the auto shop with not only the exact distance to the dealership, but also boasts that expandable map uh, with the directions. So it's really easy to see which um, ad, or it's easy to imagine which ad is going to be more effective, have better performance, and drive more uh, consumers to their either website or to their dealership. And lastly, we have site link extensions. Now, site links allow users to access additional links on your website and for advertisers to drive consumers deeper into the conversion funnel of your site. So with mobile site links, you can include two to three additional links that can direct users to take specific action or reach specific destinations. This form of ad extension has actually proven to be the most successful in driving up performance with an average improvement to the click-through rate of 30%. And again, this is, in my opinion, really a no-brainer. You're just expanding. We talked earlier about how important real estate is, and on mobile specifically, where it's so limited. If you have an ad with site links, you can see this Oakley ad here. It's taking up so much more space on that front page than the other ads, and it just grabs the attention of the users, gives them a lot more um, ability to you know land in different pages of your website so it just becomes more relevant and more eye-catching and consequently it becomes um, a lot more effective in driving performance so for auto dealers site link extensions present a great opportunity to direct mobile users to their inventory sections the weekly promotions and contact pages so again another great tool that I highly recommend you all leverage the site link extensions are are optional 
I mean, do you? Yeah. Because I, I think a lot of people would love to have those on the normal, you know, pages, not the mobile ones, and they were told that they couldn't have those. It just is automatically generated. It's not something that they can, they have any control over. But on mobile, they do? So to differentiate, and again, this is a great, um, we can use this as an example. The top part of the page, the, uh, the ad that says sponsored link, that's an ad. Those site links where it says custom products and sunglasses, you actually feed that into your AdWords account and make it available uh, to be served. Below it, what we see the organic results where you see the men's sunglasses, women products, and so forth, right. that's the organic results, and that is generated uh, dynamically without uh, the business owner's input. Gotcha. That being said, if you have your um, site map loaded properly on your website, you really can help the search engine or Google um, determine which of those links to serve against your organic listing. But when it comes to your AdWords account, you could definitely explicitly call out what those links are going to be, what they're going to be titled, and where they're going to link to. Fantastic. That is great. <laughs> Just a little anecdote there, you could put in, you might be able to put in multiple um, uh, site links, but yeah, the, the audience is correct by saying that the system will determine which site links to actually serve within your ad unit. Right. So, for instance, Marla is writing in right now, and she's, she's querying the same way I am. So, you can add site links on the sponsored part of the advertisement. The sponsored part, but but when it comes to the organic part, you don't have any control over that. So you have some control. Again, if you create a site map and upload it to your site, mm -hmm. um, and the site map basically outlines the architecture of your website. You know, you have your homepage, you have your page about men's sunglasses, women's sunglasses, and so forth. Then you could help. Um, you have a little bit more control on what will be shown there in the organic results. Okay, Marla, give that a try. <laughs> I hope that helped you out. Okay, thank you so much for, for clarifying that. Oh, and Marla Absolutely. says thank you, too. <laughs> Excellent. So now these ad extensions are not just limited to search, and in fact, Google offers these ad formats for clients advertising on the mobile display network as well as within mobile apps. Excuse me. So similar to search, these formats allow users to expand banner ads to view a business location on a map, get direction, and click to call the local business. And so on this slide, you can see a great example of an auto shop utilizing location extensions on the mobile display network. So here we have a user who is, vid who is visiting an auto-related site and is being served with a relevant banner ad promoting tires for sale. So upon clicking on this banner, the ad expands to reveal an interactive Google map and from within this map, the user can easily retrieve driving directions or place a call to the business. So again, another great tool to target audiences that might not necessarily be actively looking for your business, but rather serve up these ads while they're passively uh, surfing other relevant uh, sites. So that concludes the section about mobile ad extensions. The next mobile strategy that I wanted to introduce is creating mobile-only campaigns. What I mean by this is in creating mobile campaigns that are tailored specifically to the mobile user and are targeted and served only on mobile devices and not on desktop or laptop computers. So Eliana, if possible, I'd really like to run another poll right now before we jump into this section to see how many of the users are already splitting out their mobile campaigns and creating mobile tailored and specific campaigns. I think that's a great idea. Everyone out there, if you could please look at your screen. And of course, your feedback always helps us tailor the program in front of us more closely to what you need. So the question that Eli wants to know, your answers to are, are you currently running a mobile-only campaign? For this question, please just answer one of the following. You bet, not quite yet, or no, I didn't know I was supposed to. Once we get a majority of the votes in, we'll certainly close the poll, share the results, and move on from there. So what do you think the answer is going to be, Eli? <sighs> I'm guessing it's going to be about a 50-50 split. 50 probably are doing already, and the 50 didn't know they needed to. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we almost have everyone voting so far.
I say we close the poll right now and share the results. With almost everyone voting, here's what you got. 21% of our attendees today said, you bet. So they're definitely doing it, mobile-only campaigns. 44% of our attendees today said, not quite yet. And 35% said, no, I didn't know I was supposed to. So we really have a majority of people today that are not yet doing a mobile-only campaign. You really have, what, 79% of people on this webinar today that, that really aren't doing it. Now, does that surprise no. you? It doesn't surprise me. Um, again, I think there's what I really hope to do is demonstrate the value in doing this and then get everybody excited to go ahead and start doing this. I think there's also a lot of concerns about um, how to go about doing it. It could be a very daunting task, and I'll try to address that as well. Well, I think from a lot of the point, the perspective of a lot of people that are in internet marketing, they might be wondering, well, why would I run a mobile-only campaign? What could? Why wouldn't I just run a campaign that's just that's you know along with a whole bunch of other stuff? Why? Why run a mobile-only campaign? Oh, look, you're gonna you're about to tell us. <laughs> Perfect timing. Well, that's so thank you for teeing that up, Eliana. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, so but when we talk about a mobile strategy here at Google, one of the first things that we stress is the importance of creating mobile-only campaigns. And again, what I mean by this is as follows. As you may know, in order to reach the auto shoppers uh, who are searching online, you have the ability to create uh, an AdWords campaign that is served on mobile devices or on desktop devices. However, most campaigns by default are opted in to serve not only on the mobile devices, but on desktop and laptop computers as well. So that's what we call a hybrid campaign. So why is this bad? Well, it's not bad per se, but rather there's a whole lot of missed opportunity. And so let's go through this list of um, benefits of splitting these uh, campaigns out. Oops. So for starters, and perhaps the most compelling argument for creating mobile-only campaigns, is that we've seen that advertisers who split out their campaigns and set up mobile-only campaigns benefited, on average, from an 11.5% increase uh, in mobile click-through rates. So if you're not, so if not for any of the other reasons that we're about to address, just for the mere fact that you could automatically just increase your click-through rate of performance by 11.5% by splitting out these campaigns, I think that alone uh, should drive you to create these mobile targeted campaigns. But one of the other benefits of breaking out your mobile campaigns from your desktop campaigns is that by doing so, you're giving yourself a whole lot more control of your bids and budgets for your mobile efforts. And I'll elaborate on this point. Budgets are set at the campaign level. So if you're running a hybrid campaign, again, a hybrid campaign is being campaigns that are targeted to serve both on mobile devices as well as desktop and laptop computers, the budget that you set is a single budget for all those devices. Why is this not ideal? Well, let's say, for example, that you notice more and more traffic to your website is coming from mobile devices. To this end, you want to increase your advertising dollars on mobile. But if your ads share their budgets across these platforms, you can't effectively increase your budget for mobile advertising without also increasing your computer targeted ads budgets. So by separating out these campaigns, um, you can, in this example, increase the budgets for your mobile-only campaigns without touching and affecting your spend on desktop ads. And the same rule is true for bids. So as I mentioned earlier, on desktop computer, there are up to 11 ads that are served on every single search results page. However, on mobile devices, you only have five ads served, and really only two of them are above the fold. So it's for this reason that you really want to be a whole lot more aggressive with your bids uh, on your mobile campaigns to ensure placement in those top two spots. So without having, to, without having your campaign separated, if you wanted to increase the bids, you would be actually increasing your bids not only on your mobile campaigns, but also on your desktop campaigns as well. So by splitting those two out, you have more control on your bids, and you can increase them on the mobile and don't touch them on your desktop. A third benefit of breaking out your mobile campaigns is that in this manner, you can really tailor your ads um, and keyword lists to be more mobile suited. And so, for instance, when running mobile ads, you want to highlight that your ad is customized for the mobile experience. So using call to actions, such as check out our mobile website or download our mobile app today, 
will draw the attention of a mobile user. And also, mobile queries tend to be a little bit shorter in nature than the long tail queries entered by desktop users. So splitting out the campaigns would really allow you to create separate keyword lists um, that are more in line with the mobile user behavior. Again, we have to remember we're not sitting in front of a keyboard. We don't have, most people get a little bit lazy and don't want to type in these long five keyword queries, but rather on their mobile devices where they're just, you know, clicking away with their thumb, these queries are going to be shorter in nature. So you want to make sure that you have different keyword lists as well to reflect these differences. And so to find ideas for mobile specific keywords, you can leverage Google's keyword suggestion tool that now also supports ideas and statistics for mobile devices. The fourth reason to separate your mobile campaigns, and we just talked about this in much detail, is for you to be able to take full advantage of all the great mobile ad extensions. Again, ad extensions are a great way for you to not only enhance your ad with additional functionality, such as providing these map directions and the ability to call your dealership directly from, directly from within the ad unit, but they also help your ads stand out from the rest of the ads on the results pages. And ads leveraging these ad extensions, as we mentioned before, have seen an average, um, have seen an uplift um, to their average click-through rates in the range of 70 to 30 percent. And lastly, by separating out your mobile efforts from your desktop efforts, you can pull device-specific reports and get a better insights into each device and how it performs independent of all the other devices. So this, in return, really provides you the guidance um, and information that you need to better optimize your campaigns uh, to set smarter bids and budgets, write more effective ad copy, and select better performing keywords because you know what's working uh, for which type of device and where there's opportunity uh, for better performance. So now, and again, I mentioned this, while it may sound like a daunting task, setting up these mobile campaigns is in fact fairly simple and there's a couple ways to accomplish this. One you can leverage and the recommended um, I would say a way to do this is to leverage the AdWords editor, editor tool. With the, this tool you really have the ability to copy your existing campaigns um, then just change the settings and have a second set of campaigns that are targeted only to mobile devices. Um, or you can set this up directly in AdWords itself. And so I'm not actually going to go into much detail here, but you can reference one of the previous webinars of mine where I talked um, in a step-by-step -step fashion the process of splitting out desktop campaigns and creating mobile-only campaigns. Uh, that's true. That's true. Everyone out there, if you didn't have the pleasure of catching Eli Romberg's previous webinar with us, which was back on June 20th, and it was how to get in front of shoppers at the zero moment of truth. That was a fantastic webinar. And part of that webinar, he went into screenshot detail of exactly how to set this up. So if you missed it, we're not going to cover it today, but please feel free to go to dealeron.com slash webinar, and from there, check out the recording from that June 20th webinar. Like I said, it was called How to Get in Front of Shoppers at the Zero Moment of Truth. You'll really be glad you did. I know that the people that were on that webinar were shocked, amazed, and very appreciative of such uh, detail that he put into it. So we're not going to do that today because it takes up a lot of time and we still have so much more to cover. But thank you so much for bringing that up, Eli. Absolutely. And then so the third and last strategy that I wanted to share with you this morning is around creating mobile optimized or rather mobile friendly websites. And again, maybe one last time today, Eliana, maybe we could poll the listeners to see how many of them currently have mobile optimized websites for their dealerships. That's a great idea. Let's do it. Okay, everyone, one more time. Please look at your screen. Do you currently have a mobile optimized website or as Eli put it, a mobile friendly website? Now, of course, uh, you know, should the answer be yes? We all should. Yeah, absolutely. But some people might not know might not know if you have one. Of course, the easiest way to find out is to pick up your phone and dial up your dealership website and see how it comes out. Uh, once we get a majority of the people voting online right now, then we'll close the poll and share the results. Eli, want to take a crack at it? You did it for the first two. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to go with a statistic that I have on my screen now saying that 20% of you guys do. And 40% don't and the rest 
didn't even know they had to. Well, I will tell you what, we're going to close this poll because we definitely do have a majority of the people voting and I'm happy to report that we have a very advanced audience here today. So 75% of our attendees today said yes, they do. 6% said not sure and 19% of them said no, they do not. Oh, wow. So we literally have 75% said yes and 25% said they're not sure or, or they definitely know that they don't. So I think that's great. Congratulations all of you out there for being so advanced. That, that really is fantastic and I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that, uh, that statistic. And so the reason why I bring this up is for the last 45 minutes or so, we reviewed in much detail the explosion of mobile usage and how nearly 100 million U.S. users rely on their mobile phones to access the Internet. But as shocking as it may be, and despite the surge in mobile activity, only one in five of the largest AdWords advertisers has a mobile optimized website. And why is having a mobile optimized website so important? Well, because the user experience of using a non-optimized website on a mobile device is typically a very poor one. Not only are these sites unattractive, but they tend to be extremely difficult to navigate, requiring constant pinch and zoom action, and oftentimes significant pieces of the site might not even load. So I hope we don't have Frontier 4 joining us this today. But <laughs> I, I, brought this up I love how you actually use a real dealership. <laughs> I wanted to highlight how, you know, I mean, this is a, a great desktop website, provides a lot of great content and, you know, information. But if you try to bring this up on your mobile device, it's not the experience users are looking for, right? In order to see inventory or even just get contact information for this dealership would be very difficult. And due to these reasons, majority of users state that they won't recommend a business with a poorly designed mobile website. And equally or even more alarming is the fact that 40% of users have turned to a competitor site after a bad mobile experience. Oh, yeah. Again, somebody's doing their, their research on their mobile phone. They come across this type of a site, they're like, ah, I'm out of here, and they go look for the competition who, good chance, three out of four, according to the, our recent poll, might have a better uh, website, and that's where they're going to take their business to. Oh, yeah. So you, as you, a business you, owner, you really want to... Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, you push the backspace, and you pick a different link on the, on the SERP, and you keep on shopping. <laughs> that's exactly it. And so as a business owner, you really want to prevent that from happening and ensure that you are providing the expected experience to your mobile users. And so to this end, I want to provide a list of 10 best practices to consider uh, when you're designing your mobile website. So I'm not going to read through all of these because it's quite a lot, but I did want to uh, highlight some of the key best practices. But again, don't worry, uh, everyone that's tuned in to today's webinar will receive a PDF copy uh, of this information uh, slightly after the conclusion of the webinar. That's correct, Eli. Um, so when, I'm sorry, I was going to say that's correct, Eli. When I send everyone a link to the recording for today's webinar, this PDF will also be a link in that email. So you definitely want to check that out because it's actually got more information than what you're seeing here. And it's really, really great information. Yep. So the first and probably the most important element to keep in mind when you create your mobile website is be thumb friendly. Buttons and links should be separated out to avoid accidental clicks. Um, distinctly colored buttons stand out uh, and conversion buttons should be larger and more prominent. You want to simplify the navigation, so use clear and concise headlines. Text needs to be readable at arm's length. Again, we're not sitting in front of a desk. We're holding our phones in our hands. Keep scrolling top to bottom, reduce clutter, and make search easy. Uh, in terms of content, prioritize the content. Make it easy for customers on the go to find content that is most relevant to their needs and take quick action. Think about what the three most important things are for a mobile customer and make them easy to access. So in, again, the context of auto, likelihood that people aren't necessarily going through uh, all doing searches for VIN numbers, but rather they want to look up the address of your business, they want to call you, they want to schedule a service call. So make, determine what content makes sense for your audiences on mobile and prioritize that content on your mobile optimized website. Um, and then make it easy to convert on the go. Shorten the conversion process. So if you have forms to schedule an appointment, keep those forms concise by reducing unnecessary fields. 
keep the call to actions clear and use the click to call functionality. And as I mentioned, make it easy to find local content. So basically make sure that people can find your dealership's location very easily. So those, I think, in my opinion, are the key um, best practices to make sure that you capture uh, when you're creating or designing your mobile optimized website. And so here, I just wanted to provide you with an idea of what a good mobile optimized website looks like. Uh, again, these are just a few examples of dealerships or dealer websites that have implemented many of the strategies uh, that we just discussed. Simple navigation, large thumb friendly buttons, clear call to action, uh, and so forth. Yeah, those look great. Yep, thank you. And so now, this is a great question because I know 6% of the people said that they didn't know if their, mobile, um, if their website was mobile friendly. So now that we have a better understanding of what a good, good mobile optimized website should look like, I guess the question that arises is, do you think your site provides the right mobile experience? And so if you're still not sure, Google has created a great tool that you can leverage. It's called GoMoMeter. Uh, and you can find it at howtogomo.com. Um, and what it does is, basically, all you have to do is plug in your current website URL, and within a few seconds, it will render your site as if it were loaded on a mobile device. And then it will not only visually demonstrate whether or not your site is mobile friendly, but it will actually provide you with a detailed analysis and provide you with a list of recommendations on how you can improve the experience. So I suggest even for the 75% of the folks that said they do have a mobile optimized website, give this a shot. Make sure that uh, the results that are um, de demonstrated within this tool really indicate that you're taking advantage of all the best practices. And Eli, just so we're sure, because I didn't, I didn't see the link come up on that slide previous, it's www.howtogomo.com? That is right. Okay, I'm going to send it out to the entire audience right now in the chat feature so you guys all have it. Go ahead. Thanks. And I apologize for not including that in the slide. Oh, <laughs> I thought it just didn't come up. <laughs> and I checked it out is, yesterday, by the way, the howtogomo.com has a very, very, very cool site. It's got some really great yeah. stuff on it. Oh, and there, there, actually, the link was on the next slide right over here. I knew um, you had it. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that pretty much sums up you know, the few ideas that um, I think that should be uh, part of your consideration set as you develop your own mobile strategy for your dealership. And of course, there's a whole lot more of information that I did not have time to share with you today, but I did want to leave you with at least a few good resources that I really urge you uh, to visit and uh, reference on your own when you have the chance. So the one website is obviously the howtogomo.com. That's a great resource, uh, but additionally, there's some other links on the screen right now that I highly recommend as well. So we have ourmobileplanet.com, a Google research, ooh, nice, google.com slash mobile ads, and projectrebrief.com. <laughs> That's really cute. A lot of great information. So again, highly recommend you all visit these sites. And then lastly, I wanted to recommend the following, uh, Mobile Playbook. It's a great interactive site published by Google's head of mo global mobile strategy. And you can find this at themobileplaybook.com. Again, a lot of great content, a lot of great answers to some very interesting questions by business owners. Why should I uh, implement a mobile strategy? What does the mobile strategy look like? What are the key things I need to be touching on? So highly recommend you all visit this um, as well. And that's the mobileplaybook.com. You know, I downloaded it yesterday and I haven't read it yet, so I'm definitely going to <laughs> going to check it out when I get a chance. <laughs> Excellent. And yeah, so thank you. That that really concludes my presentation today. I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was a good use of all of your time. Uh, and most importantly, I, I hope you walk away today with at least a couple of ideas uh, of how you could um, enhance or introduce um, or tweak your mobile strategy. Well, if you think Eli did a great job, 
please let us know. Write in and let us know. Eli, I think you did fantastic, but you're not done yet because we have to go to our question and answer phase of today's webinar. And I got to tell you, they've been coming in fast and furious. I have so many questions for you. But before we get started with the question and answers, and certainly if you come up with a question for Eli, now's your chance to write it in so we can get to them rapid fire and get to as many of them as we can. I do want to give a shout out to those who went to the Google Plus dealer on page and answered today's question about what their favorite mobile strategy is. So Jim Bell wrote in, he was the first one to write in, he said there's an app for that and must be able to push notifications to it to stay in front and center of the customer's attention. Then we had Don Brennan, he wrote in opt-in appointment reminders and coupons. We have Marla Merriman, she wrote in specials, specials for mobile users, looking forward to your expertise to catapult our strategy. Thanks for being willing to share Google and DealerOn.com. Thank you so much for that. We have Daniel who wrote in, Daniel Maynard. He said, our strategy is to ask our agencies to allocate at least 20% of our online advertising budget to mobile. Of that, 40 to 50% are geared to attract service customers. All mobile ads include some type of offer or special as a call to action. Wow, that was a really great answer. Thank you so much for yeah, that. I like that answer a whole lot. And I would just say, again, you know, when I get the question a lot is, how much budget should I allocate towards mobile versus what I'm already spending on desktop? And I think the great way to determine that is really you, you have the ability to pull reports and we talked about that, I think, in one of the five benefits of splitting out your mobile campaigns. But even if you don't split out the mobile campaigns, you're, you have a report it's called segment by device type where you get a breakout of performance of um, how many people are visiting your site via um, your advertising uh, by device type. So you'll see maybe from a desktop, you're receiving 75% of your traffic. But you'll see that even without implementing a mobile strategy, you're already receiving 25% traffic from mobile devices. Now again, that experience might not be optimal, but you're getting that traffic. So that could give you a, at least a good starting point to um, determine what money, what kind of budget you want to put against mobile efforts. Uh, agreed. Agreed. And Daniel, that was a really, really great answer to the question of the day. And not to be outdone, we also have Donnie Guthrie out there. And Donnie says, we love QR codes. We have QRs on all our used cards that link to the details of each vehicle. It's great for Sunday shoppers. We also have posters throughout our dealership with QR codes that link to review sites, DealerRadar, Yelp, and Google Plus, for instance. And we also have a robust mobile site with pictures and videos. So Donnie's doing it all up with the QR codes. Absolutely. And that, that's actually also an interesting topic, uh, QR codes. I know in Japan they are uh, a phenomenon. Here in the U.S., they haven't picked up quite as much traction as I think we would like to see. but. Uh, I definitely love the strategy. Um, definitely it makes you stand out and be an innovator in the space. Absolutely. So I do want to, like I said, I want to give shout outs. We have Jim Bell, Don Brennan, Marla Merriman, Daniel Maynard, and Donnie Guthrie for their participation in today's question of the day. You're all getting some Google swag today, so we do appreciate it. Now, are you ready for these questions, Eli? Because I, I got a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Monica was the first to write in. She said, I would like to know what the studies conducted by Google show about the use of QR codes. How are QR codes being used and how much are they being used? It's funny because you were just saying how popular they are in Japan. Eh, they're starting to catch on here in America. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, to be honest, I don't have any uh, statistics, specific numbers that I can speak to. Um, again, I just know anecdotally that um, there's still a lot of room for them to pick up traction in the U.S. They are convenient, though. Yes. They're super convenient. So, um, and, and, you know, almost everyone, that's one of the, you know, it's like, okay, when you get a smartphone, you have to download, you know, music, okay, a game for your kid, and a QR <laughs> code finder, right? So, I mean, it's one of those things that you, you know, along with a flashlight. Those are one of the things that you, you download. So, I think everyone is starting to get those. But, uh, Monica, if you have a follow-up question, let us know. Trisha wrote in, what mobile opportunities would be available as it relates to fixed ops? Trisha, smart question. 
So what mobile opportunities would you recommend for fixed ops specifically? What, what do you mean by fixed ops? Okay, fixed ops in the automotive terminology, that's really like um, service, come get your car serviced, get an oil change, get your tires rotated, even, even parts if somebody just wants to come in and buy the headlight, um, aftermarket stuff like, uh, you know, uh, putting in, you know, a DVD player or something like that. So fixed ops relates to all that stuff, even collision if, if some dealerships have, you know, a body shop, for instance. So fixed ops is, is huge business for a dealership because they make a lot of money on fixed ops. So instead of just making ads to sell cars, what mm -hmm. mobile strategies can we do to have them come in, you know, every 30,000 miles to get their oil changed, for instance. Absolutely. So I, I think, and I thank you for um, filling me in on that information. I, I think one of the, the great opportunities that you could leverage here, again, is the Google Display Network and really target uh, audiences that, again, aren't necessarily looking for the specific services or aftermarket parts that you're talking about, but rather you could get a clear idea of who the audiences of these websites are and maybe target them with um, display ads uh, on the mobile devices that you know, promote your promotions or your products that you're selling. Um, I think that's one great way of doing it. Um, at the same time, you know, just your, you know, your traditional mobile uh, campaigns also with, you know, specific keyword lists that are aimed at those types of products. I think that's also uh, another opportunity, no different from desktop. Yeah, I know, because, um, you know, we did, we did a webinar on fixed ops, and Tricia, if you did miss it, we did it, um, it was the first Thursday in June, actually, and our very own Jeff Clark from DealerOn did a webinar specifically about how to market fixed ops online. He loves talking about it, and um, what we, one of the things I remember very distinctly is that dealerships are not doing enough to market their fixed ops, and they're leaving it all to the hands of, you know, Manny, Mo, and Jack. <laughs> You know, it's all about Meineke and the Pep Boys, and they're they're doing all that stuff on fixed stop side that that us dealerships need to do. So, if you didn't have a chance to to hear that one, go check it out at dealeron.com/webinars. It was a really really great webinar as well. Okay, next question comes to us from Erica. She says, "Are we going to go over how to set up an offer extension for mobile campaigns?" There was an example of an offer example on a previous slide. So I remember we talked about other things that we weren't going to cover, but is that something that we covered last time? We didn't go over offer extensions. We didn't correct? cover offer, uh, offer uh, ads, no, but let me, I'm happy to follow up with that. I'll take that as an action item and provide uh, Eliana you with the collateral, and maybe a couple of screenshots on how to go about doing that. Ah, okay. Then thank later. you very much for that, Eli. I appreciate that. Erica, I'll be sending that out to you personally. Okay. Um, Marla, write in. Is there a limit to how many paid ads display on a mobile? How many ad units would display on a mobile website? Um, how many uh, on a mobile phone? Is there a yeah, limit? So when somebody comes up to the page that they have the SERP, how many ads will display? Is that something you know? So on a search results page, you'll see up to five ads. Two of them are going to be above the fold, so above the organic results. Uh -huh. and then you have up to three ads at the bottom of the page as well. Gotcha. Interesting. Is there a way to jockey for position or it's first come, first serve? Um, so I think that's you know, one of the reasons why we recommend, especially as you initially launch your mobile campaigns for the first time, to really bid aggressively um, so you could get into those top two positions. And the reason why it's so important, at least at the beginning, to bid aggressively, and of course afterwards you could start dialing that back down, is because um, you're, you're starting these new campaigns without much uh, performance history. And so you want to make sure that you have the ability to almost buy your way into those two top slots. And then once you start getting traction, getting activity, getting um, uh, traffic to your website through these ads and building up that performance history, then your ads start getting, you know, your, your CPC that you'll be paying will start getting discounted and then you can start dialing back uh, your, your bids. But that's why we recommend from the gate to really uh, go more aggressively with your mobile bids. 
Well, there you go. I hope you all take that into account, and Marla as well. Thank you very much for the question. Okay, next question comes to us from Russ Simmons. He says, can we put our phone number in the ad text? That's great, because most phones will allow that to be clicked to dial. You can, right? Yes, yeah, so I think we just uh, introduced a change not so long ago where even if you don't set up a call extension, um, you can still just add the phone number into the text, and then it will, it will convert it uh, into um, a clickable phone number. Well, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't do that. Russ, go right on out there and do it. And Eli, how come you're not showing everyone your pretty mug shot? Come on, oh, turn the slide. Sorry. I know, I know you're shy. <laughs> <laughs> Russ, I hope that answered your question. Next one comes to us from Marla again. She says, can you give us an idea of a monthly investment to increase sales 20%? We're located in a very rural area, about a million people in the state of Montana. That's a tough question. Yeah. Marla, you're putting that's on a tough the spot. Question. <laughs> that, that's a question I get often. And so, again, I think I'll just revert back to my initial answer about uh, or comment about pulling your performance reports right now, trying to understand and gauge the, the, the volume of uh, traffic that you're receiving today um, from mobile devices and start, let that be a starting point for you to, um, as an investment for your mobile efforts. Uh, but on top of that, you also have you know various tools, uh, Google tools that will help you determine the size of the, um, uh, the the size of the population in your area and how effectively to target those in which CPCs as well. That's a, a really great and complicated answer. <laughs> um, Marla, I hope that helped you out. Marla actually had a follow-up question too. Mm -hmm. She wanted to know if you thought consumers perceive a transparency issue with the local store, the, you know, the actual brick and mortar store, the online store, and then the mobile store, and they're all kind of different. And I could see how that might confuse people, but it's also different modes of shopping. I mean, you totally get a different shopping experience when you're actually in the dealership, obviously. So, yeah, and I think you definitely still want to create that stickiness effect. So you, your mobile website, while it's optimized differently in different format, it should still reflect uh, your desktop website, which should also reflect what your dealership you know, storefront looks like. So using the same color schemes, using the same font across two different websites, using the same language, um, and you know, introducing you know, some of, a lot of the same elements would create that more of a seamless, uh, I guess, or more stickiness between the various uh, storefronts. Agreed, so, agreed. Separate entities, they're still one and one of the same. <laughs> Believe it or not, we're not done these questions. We have so many more questions, but thank you all. The, the questions have been great, and Eli, you're doing fantastic. So you stick with me for another handful of questions? Sure. All right, all right. So next one comes to us from Lacey. Lacey writes in, now that you can no longer write a Google review using a mobile phone or an iPad, what strategies are best for collecting reviews as you can't use a desktop computer in-house, in-house, you know, while she's at work? What do you think? I mean... Yeah, so I think this is more of a Google Places question, one that's pretty common in the auto industry where dealerships are trying to um, collect as many reviews as possible from their users, um, uh, you know, talking about their experience at the dealership. And mm -hmm. you know, some of the tactics that I've seen is that the dealership will hand out iPads and towards the end of the buying process or at the end of it, they will say, hey, do you mind using this device to leave us a quick review? And so there are some problems with that, um, and we're still trying to figure out the w right way to go about that. I think one solution, and obviously you want to have as high a percentage of uh, respondents, but you know, following up with the customer after they left the dealership with a postcard, with an email, with a quick way for them to go ahead and leave uh, a request to you know review your business and review the experience that they had while buying a car at your dealership. I think that really um, is the best way to go about it. Obviously, you won't have as many reviews, but those that review, I think, will be a good um, good reviews, and they will stick. And I think that's a good strategy. 
It's, it's funny because we, we actually have some of our, our viewers right now are writing in. They're having a conversation with you. So let me, let me see if I, can, uh, if I can help you out here. Russ Simmons wrote in. He said, the Places Review button is gone or missing on mobile devices is a known issue and will return from what he's read. So there you go. And Monica Mendoza wrote in, you actually can write a mobile review on an iPhone or iPad. It's not recommended to do that on premise. But on July 2nd, the new Google Plus local app was released to iOS. So, <laughs> I don't know. One says it's already here, and another one says it's coming back. Either way, So I think uh, you might be also about, uh, and the question was whether or not you can actually leave them physically, or what happens once you do leave them, are they removed later on? Uh, but yeah. Yeah, and Lacey wrote in. She says she says it was released, but it still shows errors in her part of the world. So, so you know, I, I am sure the, our, the good people over at Google are going to get this thing fixed, and we're going to have it so that it makes the most sense for all of us. Wouldn't you say that, Eli? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I know. You know, and I appreciate everybody's patience with this particular product. It, it could have been. You know, I, I think there's a lot of frustration in the marketplace with this particular product, but uh, the teams are working. Uh, long and hard to fix all the issues and really um, build a better system and a better experience for all. Uh, absolutely. So Lacey and everyone else who wrote in on that, obviously it's something that we're going to keep our eye on. And, and who knows, hopefully in the future we might have another webinar specifically about Google Places because I know a lot of dealerships want to know about that. So real quick, I just want to let you know, Eli, that Marla wrote in, thank you, great job. Sean, Lucas, very good. Stacy, great job. Wow, I'm getting so many great. Uh, thank you so much for the information today. We here at Youngblood have added mobile apps for each of our franchises. They're awesome, and I'm glad to have had the opportunity to be a part of this information today. So you are already getting some thanks from a lot of people out there, Eli. Really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And, and <laughs> good, good use of your time and provided you with the right information that you were looking for. Now, believe it or not, we still have some more questions rolling in. I don't know how much longer I can keep you, Eli. <laughs> I think I've got another four minutes before I have to jump. Four minutes? Okay. We're going to use it for all it's worth. Um, let's see. Teresa wrote in, we have an SEM company that does PPC and mobile for us. How can we tell if what they're doing is really working? Their reporting always shows that they're very successful, but I want the real info. What do you, what kind of information, what kind of uh, advice can we give to Teresa? So, um, two things. First of all, I would say if you have access yourself to not only their dashboards, but access to your AdWords accounts, then you could really measure the performance of your uh, campaigns uh, and see that way if, you know, the data matches up. But at the end of the day, if what they're, I think one of the data that they'll be sharing with you is around um, conversions, calls, form submissions, uh, email submissions, map interactions, or maybe not map interactions, but all the other things you should be able to measure uh, within your dealership and you know, cross-reference it against the number of calls that you actually are receiving and the emails. Did we really receive 50 or 500 emails this month as that vendor is proclaiming? So um, I think those, those really are two ways to go about doing that. Uh, okay, and and Teresa, absolutely what Eli said is absolutely right, and Russ wants to help you. He says, you know, you should try and get ad access to your own AdWords account, so if you can do that, that's great too. Um, we have a really good question from Patrick. He wrote in, at what point and at what cost do you go for your own dealership app? <laughs> are a lot of dealerships doing that right now? Uh, that's a really good question. That is a really good question. <laughs> but they're not cheap, and also, I, I think the question is, or warrants is, what value do you expect to get out of this app, right? Because again, there's a high cost to these things. So, um, and what will your users or potential users uh, look for in an app? Is it scheduling maintenance calls? Am I going to download an app for that, or am I just going to look you up online and then dial the number and schedule uh, a maintenance uh, uh, or service or whatever it is? Um, so I, I don't know. I, I'm torn about that. I've seen a lot of vendors that offer great apps or specialized apps for the auto industry. I'm, I'm not 100% sold. How, how much does an app run? I mean, an app's not cheap, is it? 
They're not, and I'm sure some of the folks online could probably give you a better idea of what this uh, will cost you. But um, and maybe somebody in the audience could share that does have an app, what their experience with that app is, and what the levels of engagement are with that app. Hey, Patrick, I'll, I'll ask that for you, Patrick. Hey, if anyone out there has an app for their dealership, tell us how much it costs and if you thought it was a valuable addition to your your internet presence. I'm curious. If anyone has that, please write in. Um, and one, one, oh, here we go. <laughs> Um, Russ wrote in $500 or more for a bookmarking app, but we don't have one yet. And he says bookmarking apps just bookmark different areas for your forms on your site. I don't know if it's worth $500. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Like I said, I'm very skeptical about how many users it would actually download that, and once they download it, how often they'll actually engage with the app. Oh, oh I'm sorry. He wrote back in a month. <laughs> Is it five hundred dollars a month or five hundred dollars for the app? Patrick wants to know. <laughs> oh, it's a one-time fee. There you go. So five hundred dollars for a bookmarking app. I don't know. Would you do it, Eli? I would probably uh, spend my money uh, in a different way. <laughs> All right. This campaign instead. Well, thank you both Patrick and Russ for that conversation. Last question, last one. Monica wants to know, are you able to talk a bit about Google Plus Local and how monitoring Google reviews should play into a dealership's mobile strategy? Are you able to talk about it or you're not able to talk? <laughs> I would rather not talk about that. Okay. <laughs> I got about 30 seconds before I hop off and that's a pretty detailed question. Um, but I think you know Google Local, Google Plus Local is, is going to be a great opportunity for dealerships to engage with their audiences. You know the Google Places product um, was really a very static solution um, and wasn't really meant for you know direct interaction. It was rather just almost like a, a, a page that had the address and phone number and a little bit of other content. I think the Google Plus Local platform will really provide a whole slew of new ways of for business owners and in your case auto dealers to engage with their audiences um, you know have conversations with them you know and really present a lot of opportunities from a marketing standpoint agreed and you know what Monica I'm gonna really try my hardest to see if we can get a, a Google Plus a Google Plus webinar and a, and a Google local webinar and a Google Pages webinar and we need to know a lot more about how Google can help us. So I, I definitely have that on my radar and thank you so much for that question and thank you all for your participation and especially you Eli Romberg from Google. You were nothing short of spectacular today. You're on fire. So people are all writing in right now. Excellent. Thanks. Thumbs up. Excellent. So um, I want to thank everyone of course for coming and I know we kept you past the top of the hour, but I'm sure you'll agree it was time very well spent. I want to remind the audience, a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today for your reference. Please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And today's webinar is also going to be posted online within 24 hours. So go to dealeron.com slash webinars. And there you can also view our upcoming webinar schedule and access all of our past webinars too. Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to receive a short survey. Please fill it out, and we're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. And today, we're going to randomly select some winners from all the completed surveys to win some Google swag. And let me tell you, they got some nice swag. Invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next webinar, New Breakthroughs in Search Engine Marketing. Jason Wiley, National Director of Sales at Haystack, is going to show us SEM at its finest and you if you want to know how to get the most out of your SEM campaigns then this will be another can't miss presentation by your friends at Dealeron so don't forget Dealeron's weekly webinars are held every Thursday 12 noon Eastern time 9 a.m. Pacific time and we have some really great webinar subjects planned but if you have any questions comments or suggestions regarding these webinars and our topics feel free to contact me directly it's Eliana at DealerOn.com. I love hearing from you. And thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today. And I hope to see you all on a future webinar in our continuing education series. Have yourselves a great one, and I'll see you on the flip side.